All right, so hello and welcome back. We are going to continue our conversation with blind contour today, but we're switching our subject up from our hand from what we started with for our first lesson, and we're going to be doing portraits. Here you can see one of my self-portraits from a demonstration in a previous class. For this assignment, you will need paper, a pen. I'm gonna put this aside, and I like to use a little bit of tape. You will also need a subject. Now, I, I like you said, like I said, if I pull this back over, here is a self-portrait. I'm going to be drawing myself using a mirror. You can use a mirror and draw yourself as well. Or if you would like to draw a classmate or someone in your home, um, you're more than welcome to do that. I would encourage you to draw someone from real life in front of you rather than a photograph. I really want you to observe the details in person. Now, in our previous conversation, we talked about the, the details and the curves of eyes noses and mouths. We talked a little bit about the shape of faces, that sort of thing. And you're going to see that information is really going to come into play with blind contour of our portraits. So I have a mirror in front of me over here so I can see myself. In class I will have mirrors and or you'll be able to draw each other. But for um, this conversation I'm just going to be able to draw myself right here. All right, so again, I'm gonna use some tape for myself so I don't have to worry about my paper moving around. Remember with blind contour, we're not looking at the paper at all. That's what we're blind to. We're going to be only observing the subject. So I'm only looking straight ahead at the mirror. I'm not gonna look down here at my paper. Now for the camera, I have this pretty, like this setup really close to my mirror. If I pull it into frame a little bit, the mirror is right here in front of me. My paper is right here in front of me in person not in person, but um, for yourself when not on camera, I would suggest that you put your paper over here and then you turn your body like that way, right? And look at the mirror in a different direction. That way you're not tempted to look down at your paper. Remember with blind contour, we're not looking at the paper. We're focusing on detail, um, but we're trying our best not to look at the paper. It's not about the final product. As you can see, if I pull this one back over, the final product is looking pretty crazy, right? But you can tell that I'm looking at the shapes of things and the details. Okay, so I'm gonna show you what to do and then we'll talk about what not to do and then you're gonna be off to draw this as well. All right, so before you begin, I suggest you make yourself a little bit of a plan. Right now I'm looking in the mirror and I'm sort of thinking about where to start. I think I'm gonna start with my hairline um, and it goes back and then it sort of has um, two pieces. I have my hair pulled back in a ponytail. I've got two earrings on and I have like a v-neck shirt. So I'm going to try and capture those details as well. All right, here I go. So when I draw hair in this way, I don't want to draw the texture of my hair. I have straight hair, but if I had curly hair, um, I wouldn't want to draw that texture. Here's my ear. I'm going to jump over to my eyebrow now. And you do want to try and keep the pen down on the paper as much as possible. Because you know once you pick it up, like I'm going to pick it, I always pick it up. <laughs> once you pick it up, you don't really know where you're going. You sort of have to guess a little bit. And you can most likely guess wrong. Whereas if you're feeling the pen on the paper, you're sort of going to um, intuitively know where you're at more. So I'm going to mark the bridge of my nose just a little bit. And then I'm going to come down and do my nostrils that I see. And then I'm going to tackle my mouth. And I have a little mark under my chin. And then I need to get my face shape, but I don't know where I'm going. So maybe I'll try and think about where my eye was. Maybe drop in an ear, the rest of my ear here. Earring. And then I'm gonna go down my neck. Looking at my shirt, I feel like I'm running out of paper, that's okay. If you go right off the paper, it's no big deal, right? 
here's the rest of my neck and then I have my ponytails rather long I need that pandemic haircut <laughs> still it's coming over maybe I'll give myself some shoulders Go here. Okay. Oh boy. <laughs> so that first look, right when you look down, is always a little startling. All right. So what do we like about this? Right. What is going to be? Let me fix this a little bit so you can see some of the details I drew maybe off camera a little bit. Sorry about that. Um, I want you to notice the shape of my hair. Right. I want you to notice the shape of my jaw, the shape and the detail of the eyes that I've included, the shape of my nostrils and my mouth, right? The details of my shirt that I was seeing, it's sort of like coming in and then down, right? I don't want you to be drawing textures, right? Does this look like me? Sort of. I mean, I don't. I hope I don't have this big of a forehead right now. It looks like I've got a big brain, right? Um, but yeah overall this I've, I've tried to capture the essence of each thing individually if this were a piece of wire i could like pick it up and like move it around and squish that forehead down a little bit i think these drawings are really beautiful i'm gonna sign it because i want to keep that one i'm gonna pull off my tape now would be when i would reach for another piece of um, paper and i would i'm gonna fold this over because i think that that's cool this bottom part here now would be when I would reach for another piece of paper and do another drawing for blind contour. I'm going to actually show you what not to do though instead of what to do. And then I'll show you a couple examples um, of some slides that I have of interesting details as well as some examples from my other classes. All right, so here's the biggest problem I see with people doing blind contour in person. I see them sit down and I see them forget everything that they, that they are looking at and they just do what they know. So they look at a person, they look at themselves and they say, okay, I have a head. <laughs> Yikes, right off the bat. That is not what we're seeing, right? Our heads aren't this round egg ball oval shape. That is a symbol. And we don't want symbols, but this person isn't looking. They're just thinking, okay, a head is round. Okay, what else do we need? We need eyes, and then they see the eyes as being round. And then they say, okay, we need eyeballs, right? Miss Jordan wants detail. Maybe I'll give some eyelashes. They're not looking, right? For the nose, I often see people think, and they're like, okay, details. We have nostrils. Nostrils are also round, and they're dark. Right? What else? What else? Uh, we uh, Okay, we have like that <laughs> right again simple right and then I think in the mouth they go okay it's a line and I know she said it's not flat we have lips right I have a neck almost forgot the hair this person has a lot of hair and this is when I hear this noise is when I walk over and I start to um, address that student because we're not drawing hair like this. Who's that? Hopefully no one's hair looks like this, right? But we're just like, okay, I know that there's hair there, so I'm going to get it all in. She's got a lot of hair, so I'm just going to, and they're like looking around the room, you know, just like, I got I to gotta spend some time drawing hair, Miss Jordan. Mm -hmm. Right? And they go, oh crap, I forgot eyebrows. Oh, she's got earrings on, right? These are all symbols, right? This is a symbol for what hair is. This is a symbol for eyes, nose, mouth. There is no evidence here that you were actually looking at someone or something, right? Zero evidence here whatsoever. These are all symbols and this is what not to do. You will get a zero if you turn something in like this because it's showing me that you did not observe it's showing me that you did not pay close attention and even try and attempt this process, right? You just imagined what all these things were. If I pull over my example that we just completed, does this look like me? Does this look like a drawing that I want to keep and, and show off and make my profile picture? 
Probably not, right? But it shows evidence of detail. Look at the shape of the hair that I'm seeing. I didn't draw any individual hairs because they're too far away. I can't see them, right? Let me pull over my example from the beginning. Here's another one, right? I want you to see my hair is shorter and down. You can see that I have like my hair coming down. You can see I had earrings on as well. You can see that I had like probably a sweater with like a ribbed edge here, right? In my last period class, I was wearing a mask in person, 2020. Look at my hair here, right? Look at the mask. Do you see how this is coming around my ear, right? The eyeballs are real close together. Check that out. Look at all the detail in the mask that I saw. As an example, in that class, I printed out this picture of Zac Efron <laughs> so I could show you what, how to draw a nose and a mouth because of the mask covered that up, right? Does this look like Zac Efron? Not really, right? But do you see the evidence that I was observing Zac Efron? Yeah. Right. I also want to show you, if I were to take these drawings and make them into something else, maybe I could add other materials, right? What if I went in with paint or color pencil or graphite and I developed this drawing? I did just that with, let me go back here. Where is it? This one. I took this drawing. I really liked it. Took this drawing. I thought it looked sassy. And I traced it onto new paper because I wanted to keep the original like this. And then I added watercolor. Right. And I did another one for an example of a student. Um, he was my subject. I drew him and then we splatter painted it out. Right? I thought this was really beautiful curves. We captured Kate in his eye there. So these drawings can have a life beyond the exercise, but the real point is to observe those details and recreate what you see. Okay? All right, now it'll be the time for you to grab your pen, to grab your paper, and to draw at least 10 portraits of yourself or others around you. Enjoy that process, and you will be submitting one of these to me. Okay, enjoy. Until next time.